Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Tonight on the show, we're gonna start with a jazz reference. That's right, elevating the show continually. When they said we can't go lower, we took it higher. I wanna refer you to John Coltrane's A Love Supreme because that is the cadence for tonight's dish. Contrap Supreme, Contrap Supreme, Contrap Supreme, Contrap Supreme. And that is the only time we will ever find a way to shoehorn a jazz classic into our show, I think. Contrap Supremes, one of the best Taco Bell items? Not even a question, it just is. There are a lot of videos on the internet on how to make this. And why? Because they're good. But most of those videos are very disappointing. In my, in my life, I think it's funny to make fun of popular YouTubers because I am not one. And therefore, whatever I have to say about them is completely irrelevant. But uh, J Joshua Wiseman is a very popular YouTuber and he did a video on making better Crunchwrap Supremes. Which started with, I have never had a Crunchwrap Supreme. Do you trust a man, John, in life? Or viewer, John or viewer, <laughs> either of you, who has never had a Crunchwrap Supreme. No. Neither do I. And, and also his whole video was how to make a chicken cr Crunchwrap Supreme. Get the f*** out of here. Get the f*** out of here. Get the f*** out of here. I love the Crunchwrap Supreme. Part of why it's so great is that you get to eat a burrito shell, a tostada shell, and a taco shell. All in the same food item. And if that's not a recipe for success, I don't know what is. Is it recommended to make these this food item at home? Probably not. I mean, Taco Bell is not that far away. I don't know if this will be a significant improvement over that fine corporate product fueling the masses in their daily tasks. But we're going to do it anyways. And part of the reason why we're doing that tonight is I want to make something that I know I like and cannot possibly f*** up to the point that I would not like. Playing it safe. No liver in this <laughs> in this recipe. I, w I was feeling existential after that. I was like, man, should I even cook anymore? Like, do I like food anymore? All right, tonight we're keeping it classy with our Bold Rock Glassy. We're gonna have a little G and T in the P. I'm the P. Usually I put the lime in the glass, but I just threw it away. I don't know why I did that. John, viewer, do you think that I had a G and T before we started filming? We'll reveal the answer later in the show. All right, this is another one of those trick questions where you didn't have a gin and tonic, you had two. Well, it's later in the show. Yeah, I had two before we started. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start with making some seasoned beef. We need two pans for this, maybe. I don't know. We're gonna heat this skillet using the stove, which is our preferred way of adding heat to the pan. We're gonna put this beef, which is 80-20, into the pan. And we'll season it with a little taco seasoning here shortly. We could add fat, but it's not necessary in the non-stick. And the 20 refers to 20% fat, so like, it's gonna be fine, there's fat. You could buy taco seasonings for 38 cents from Kroger, or you could use more than 38 cents worth of seasoning at home, which is what we're doing here today. That is cumin, that's cumin. We're putting in some cumin, then we're gonna put in some chili powder. I got new chili powder, it's uh, organic. It smells pretty good. Chili powder is probably the, uh, I don't know, probably the most significant flavor in this. We're gonna use a little oregano. It's called oregano because uh, in the state of Oregon, it is legal to use this seasoning uh, in pretty much anything. That's right, there are currently no laws in Oregon about how you use this spice. It's a little garlic power. I gotta get some more garlic power. Run low on that. Here's some onion power, which is really, really old and I can't wait to use this up. Okay, here's some paprika, some of that good shit. I'm gonna add flat iron flakes. These are the green ones with the big gym, the sandia, the jalapeno, and the habanero. This was supplied by our good friend Judah. And I think this makes everything taste good. That will make it a little bit spicy compared to some other taco seasonings. And then of course we're adding salt and pepper and we'll give it one of these. And look at that, it's taco seasoning. Now you can taste it and adjust, but honestly, I'm just gonna throw it on there. And welcome to Taco Bell. Sir, this is a Wendy's. All right, so that I just dumped out some of the seasoning. 
We're on a, a good, we're on the good path. Everything's good. I'm trying to introduce chaos in this show and it's working. <coughs> oh, the chilies are, <coughs> they've got me. Oh, all right, let's open the door. Oh wait, no, we can't do that. The neighbors are at. All right, <coughs> all right. We're gonna, um, we're gonna do a little mise en place. A little boots and pots. All right, so this is, uh, you know, it's fast food, right? So with fast food, you, you gotta have the things prepped. Okay, I chopped this iceberg lettuce, and there it is on our pan. Now, if you were a restaurant, you couldn't prep ingredients this way. They, you, would, you would get a, a health code violation. But nobody's regulating my kitchen. Thank God. Check this one out. Check this one out. This is that seasoned beef. Oh, no, it didn't flip. There we go. Okay, here's our tomato. This is a uh, fairly unremarkable grocery store tomato. The amount of tomato that you chop is ultimately up to you. I find that Taco Bell, not generous with tomatoes. And I think that that's not necessarily a uh, like profit margin decision. I think that the average schmuck doesn't like tomatoes all that much. So in this context where you're like, yeah, just give me a f***ing cardboard taco shell full of, is it meat? Probably. Like having literally three small pieces of tomato on your whole taco probably makes sense in that context. I feel like that's part of the uh, authentic experience for living moss, as it were. And yet I love it. There's no denying it. Okay, this is probably the worst way to cook ground beef I've ever done. You know, I probably burnt the hell out of the seasoning. So let's go ahead and break it up. Okay, what else? Uh, we got tortillas, big and small and tostada. And then we got Rico's Gourmet Nacho Cheese, straight from the can. All right, here we are, we're breaking up the beef. Now this is, of course, the least authentic part of this recipe, because Taco Bell serves up meat that, you know, for a very long time, people have questioned, is it even beef at all? You know, how many fillers and binders are in there? But you know, it probably is beef. I mean, if, you know, in this day and age, there's more transparency into those kind of things. But just just this alone, of, you know, eating beef that is not from one of those places, probably gonna taste better. Probably is. And also it's not chicken. Who the f is eating chicken crunchwrap supreme? I don't know. Okay, what else do we need? We got the cheese, we gotta warm that cheese up. We do, we gotta do it. But we'll get this in the microwave to uh, briefly warm it up when we're ready to apply it. But we do need sour cream as well. Oh shit. All right, here's, here's my advice for the day. Phil's, Phil's uh, OSHA safety tips. If you're cooking in your kitchen and you got your pans like this, with an orientation where the handles are this far, don't walk to the stove like this. That's dumb. I just did that. Instead, take the handles to the side. Incredible. All right, now this is not traditional. This is a bold maneuver, but I like onions. This is not half an onion. This is the butt of an onion. Even less people like onions than like tomatoes, so Taco Bell just doesn't f with them on a lot of things. Supreme to them means adding tomato and sour cream and I think cheese. But I like onions, so we're gonna, we're gonna add onions to these. Okay, we've got this, that, and our beef, sour cream, and our cheese. What are we missing? Baja Blast. We don't have the Baja Blast. What do you think is missing, John? A different kind of cheese? Ding, 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 ding! The missing ingredient was more cheese. <laughs> That's literally it. And you know, we got that Mexican blend. Vinny, what are you doing? He ain't doing nothing. Okay, our seasoned beef is done. That's what they always call it, seasoned beef. It ain't just regular beef. If you feel like draining it, you can. Doesn't really look that wet to me. So let's do it. Let's make a mother crunch Crunchwrap Supreme at home. All right, here's how we do it. Get yourself the biggest tortilla you can find. Now I will acknowledge right now that this, this is about a 12 inch tortilla. I think Taco Bell uses even larger tortillas. But finding a tortilla bigger than this in a regular grocery store, is tough to do. So we're gonna have to do a little work around what's he do's it kind of thing in order to achieve greatness in this dish. All right, it starts with the beef, the beefiness. Or it doesn't have to, actually. Let's uh, microwave this cheese for 20 seconds and see what happens. I think we're gonna start with the, with the nacho cheese. Uh, let's let's try it right out the can. Let's try it out of the can. There's almost no spice. There is like there's like the fart of one jalapeno. You can either apply the beef or you can apply the cheese. But today we will start the cheese. And using your spoon, you're gonna make a circle in the middle of the tortilla. Now, my biggest and most important advice for this gourmet cuisine is to resist overstuffing your crunch wrap supreme. Because the more shit you put in it, the more difficult it is gonna be to fold and cook and eat. 
And if you have what we have here, which is an abundance of ingredients, just make two of them. <laughs> like, make two good ones instead of one big sloppy. Next up, seasoned beef. You want a single layer of this, not too much. Also, I didn't try the beef, so I have no idea if that seasoning was any good. Now, you see me making a circle in the middle. That is because we want it to be roughly one tostada in size. One tostada. Look at this. It's perfect. I did. Okay, next up. Next up, we're gonna apply sour cream directly to the tostada. Not your forehead. I know that's what you were thinking. Here I have a small cheese knife. That'll be perfect. You want a thin layer. Just eat, just make multiple ones. Don't go ham. I know that you had a hell of a Tuesday and you're like, well, what if I just put a lot of sour cream? Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait until Saturday for that. Okay, next up is the lechuga. And don't hold it back on that, because Taco Bell ain't never holding back on that lettuce. Lechuga. And then put exactly two small tomatoes. I'm just kidding. Add some more. As many as you like. I can't tell you how many times I've had Taco Bell and been like, is there actually tomatoes in this? And then we're adding honey, because we like to keep it honey. That means 100. And that's what cool kids say. All right, here's the Mexican cheese. That is the next ingredient. Big sprinkle. And if you are a bold, crazy person, you could add sauce now because it's your Crunchwrap Supreme and you want it like you want it. But we're gonna skip that for now because we're just making a regular Crunchwrap Supreme. Okay, here we are. Now we heat up a pan over here, probably like medium low. Now in my internet research, I came across an actual, I think it was an actual Taco Bell training video on how to fold a Crunchwrap Supreme and how long to grill it. How long do you think? is the perfect time to grill a Crunchwrap Supreme. All together or on each side? The training did not specify. <laughs> According to the Taco Bell training video, 27 seconds. I don't believe it. And we also don't know how hot that grill is. So that information is useless, but I felt like sharing it. Okay, now we are missing one thing, which we might have gotten away with, not including, you know, if our tortilla was just a little bit bigger, but I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it now. Go ahead and take a small taco tortilla. This is your, your topper, okay? And you can compress it a little bit if you want. That's fine. Basically, we need something to cover the middle part to get a, a, a cohesive, full product that the masses will enjoy. Okay, and as a result, you're gonna eat one tortilla, two tortillas, and a tostada. That's probably like 400 calories at least, all on its own. You're gonna be filled with energy and zest for life. Okay, so we're heating up over here. Now's the, the hard part, which even though I felt like I was being restrained in the amount of uh, filling that I added, I'm already gonna tell you that this is gonna be a little bit tough to fold. And there's a couple of different ways to do this, okay? So you can fold it, like that, Dude, okay, I'll, I'll talk about what I'm doing. Take one, one side in, as far as you can, and then from there, there will be a diagonal fold. I think it's easier to take the opposite side and bring it in, and then fold this section in, like so. And then we repeat on the other side, and we repeat on the other side, and thank Christ Almighty, oh, <laughs> thank Christ Almighty, there you have a folded Crunchwrap Supreme. Okay, it's got six sides, it's hexagonal. That's the product we want. It got a little f***y, just a little f***y, but that's okay. Now, if I let go of this tortilla, what happens? It explodes. Yeah, it all comes apart. So what you need to do is remember what you did, uh, but also make sure that your pan's hot and ready for toasting. You can toast it dry on a non-stick, but if you wanna make it taste really good, and you wanna be a fat ass, maybe add a little butter. What's the worst that could happen? It tastes better? So I'm gonna melt this butter right here in my pan, and I'm borrowing um, quesadilla philosophy here. A little butter on a tortilla tastes pretty nice. Looks good to me. Now we get to fold it again. I already demonstrated how to do that. So here it is, only a slight tear. Not even that bad at all. And once you've pushed it down, seam sides down, you're pretty much golden. Now it will take us more than 27 seconds, that's for sure. If you would like, you can use something to press it down to make it more brown. And if you are unfamiliar with this cuisine, you may uh, be asking yourself, are we seriously cooking lettuce in that thing? And the answer is yes, yes we are. That's how they do it, and that's how we're doing it. Now the cool thing, or maybe awful thing, is that we have so many ingredients, I'm gonna make like, a lot of these. I kind of think having leftover Crunchwrap Supreme is gonna be bitching. I do. Now, if you wanna uh, elevate the flavor of your dish, just salt it, you know, just salt it. That'll give it more of a commercial product feel as you know, it's gonna have salt to delight your taste buds uh, with those 
carbs and fats. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, John. You can use another pan to press it down, or maybe a spatula. But the more you press it down, the more brown you'll see on one side. We'll probably just use a spatula to flip it, I'm thinking. All right, it's been about a minute. We're gonna see if we can flip it and if it holds together. It does. And also, look at that. That looks like the blanket that I was wearing at the start of the show. It's a good sign. I think this food item is gonna be excellent and I'm excited to make a pile of these. Also, I'll say that even with our fairly restrained version of this, this is bigger and thicker than a normal Taco Bell crunch wrap. And in fact, it is pretty pitiful how some of those come out where it won't even fill up like this. It'll basically be just those like three tortillas with the semblance of something inside. But uh, you know, that's, that's, that's how life works sometimes, you know. The crunch wrap is never as thick as you want it, unless you make it yourself. That's my advice. You can put whatever you want in there. Pickled jalapenos would be bitchin' in this. Pickled onions would be bitchin'. You could use chicken instead of beef, but then you would be a coward. If you wanted to make this vegetarian, you know, just change all of the ingredients except for the ones that are vegetables. Uh, <laughs> I just think like any combination of salsa, anything that you like on tacos would be excellent in this format because it is, you know, a modified taco. If we look at the other side, that's looking pretty toasty. Maybe another 30 seconds and then this one will be done. Okay, let's pull her out. There it is. Okay, here's the important part, which is the cross section. It's what everyone wants to see. Oh, that's satisfying crunch. And here it is. Look at that neat and motherfucking tidy crunch wrap supreme. And it is even photogenic. And if I stack it like this and charged you $25, you'd be like, I'm never going to Taco Bell again. <laughs> All right. Now, you know, we had to get the regular sauce and I'm sure it's someone somewhere is like, well, you know, Phil likes that good value. Why doesn't he just have the sauce packets? And I did, but you know, cleared out the cabinets and you know, I threw them out. <laughs> so I had to buy the sauce. Well, let's try it with no sauce. That's a bold maneuver, right? That's authentic. That's like surprisingly more Taco Bell like than I thought it would be. It legit tastes like Taco Bell. Like I thought it would be way better. No, it's like pretty much the same. You put a sauce on it, you can't even tell. This, oh, oh, <laughs> I knew that would happen. Okay, well my shirt's, my shirt's ruined. I gotta go change. I gotta get this out of my shirt before it stains. That's our show, Crunchwrap Supreme. It's excellent, make your own. It's really tasty. Goodbye!